Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the talk with Sorintan Haure for uh, another new episode. I'm sure it's a very interesting part of the year. Uh, we are all getting prepared for the upcoming Lok Sabha election 2024. And I'm sure that uh, most of us are occupied with this uh, interesting uh, election. And I'm sure that uh, this time it's going to be a very interesting one because uh, there are lots of uh, interesting personalities uh, fighting for this lone outer parliamentary constituency. Um, for this special episode, I'm today joined by three gentlemen representing different districts. I would like to introduce them and then welcome them, and uh, we shall go ahead with the discussion. Uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Kundrak Kundrakpam Ransan. He is the founder of uh, Kihong. And also, I'd like to introduce you, uh, Mr. Adani Peter, who is the founder of Hills Hornbill Express. And lastly, but not the least, um, I'd like to introduce you, Mr. T.S. Mantung Anal. He is the founder and president of Wisecraps uh, Chandel. Thank you all so much for joining me on this special episode. And I'm sure that uh, after we have this discussion, it's going to be a fruitful and a beneficial one for our people. Um, we, we'd like to know about you and your work uh, later on. You can mention a little bit about it so that uh, people can get to know you and your uh, work as well. But, uh, to get it started, uh, I would like to start with uh, Mr. Uh, Ransan, Ransan Kumar. Uh, I'd like to know about the, your place, where you come from, and then to your constituency. Yes, uh, since you are a part of the uh, outer parliamentary constituency as well, we'll, we would like to, first of all, get to know about the current uh, political scenario of your area, as well as the uh, Maitei community, because uh, since May the 3rd of last year, it's, it's been a very um, tense situation, I should say, between the Maitei community and the uh, Koki community. And it has affected not, not just the two communities, but the whole of uh, communities who are living in the state of Manipur. So uh, we would like to get to know a little bit from you, the current political scenario of your community. Mm. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for having me. So uh, I come from a Kambo constituency. <clears throat> so right now the MLA is Surjo Kumar, uh, son of former Chief Minister Okram Bibovi. Okay. But uh, when it comes to outer parliamentary election, unlike inner parliamentary constitution, it's, it's not, I'm not, I, I'm thinking like the people's participation in this outer constituency election is very less compared to past elections also. And the thing is that for inner, I think there is maximum popular participation. People are campaigning, organizing meetings and all. But after constituencies, uh, two of them, uh, the candidates, Alfred and the other one, sorry, Arthur by Congress and the other one by uh, supporting, of uh, other one from NPF supported by BJP. So they are getting supports because uh, BJP has, and Congress has their grassroots level uh, offices and also from them, I think they can organize all those. But right now, at the moment, I don't see anything from them because I have talked to many of my friends right now. So when I talk to them, what they are saying is that as long as the conflict is going on, they cannot focus on elections. Okay. But it's very unlike of what's happening in the inner parliamentary constitution. And when election comes, I'm very skeptical of elections also because uh, when it comes to Indian election, polarization is one of the things that's visible throughout the India also, the country, not only Manipur. So election is one way that it's a number game, to be honest. Right. So in order to get numbers and to win elections, <clears throat> it has become one way for the political parties to try to appeal to the masses using these communal cards or uh, ethnicities and all. So I'm a little bit skeptical of it. And again, uh, the promises which is going to be made by the candidates, mm -hmm. it's something that, to be honest, not very hopeful considering the political scenario right now. Okay. So that would be my first okay, Ratsan, comment. Okay, um, it's an interesting update. I'd like to get to know if uh, the Maite community, I think it comprises of eight assembly constituencies, uh, a part of this uh, auto parliamentary constituency. Um, this time, there are no candidates uh, from the Maite community of, of this constituency. You said something interesting, which is uh, that your people are not that interested. The people from the Maite community are not that interested to participate. Is it because uh, there is no candidate from your community or is it because uh, you feel that, uh, you know, the MPs who has been, uh, who had been elected or since they are, uh, you know, 
the tribals, the MPs has been the tribals, or yes, even at the moment, the four of them are tribals. So you think just because they are not from your community, uh, the Maitei community is not interested to participate in this election? Is that what you think? I don't think that's not the like way. I mean, if I put it, then in the last few elections, parliamentary elections, uh, of course, Maitei cannot contest for after constituency elections. But that's one way. But the another thing is that in last parliamentary elections, MP outer constituencies, people participate. So like former MPs like Thangso Vaite and other MPs came for events, for campaigns and all. But this election, considering the political scenario and right now, the youths are like unlike inner because if you are from my day community and you should have some aspirations for my day community, that's what inner candidates are doing. They are trying to appeal to the mighty masses using some, some are... Uh, like rumors are there that they are trying to appeal ethnic, on ethnic lines. Some are trying to speak for the integrity of Manipur. Some are trying to speak for the cards that's available that can appeal the hearts of people right now. So that's what they are doing. But in this other constituencies, I think it's another way. In another way, I think it's a good way because all the candidates, they can offer some ways of reconciliation also because they can visit this is the opportunity for them to visit those places of both cookie communities and Maitai communities. If they can do it, then this is an opportunity for them to explore the needs, the emotions, to understand them. Okay. So this is an opportunity, but for now, I don't see much appealing to the needs also right okay. now. So that, I don't know why, why the campaign are happening, but in Maitai dominated constituencies, I don't think, think much of the camp campaigns are happening. But another thing is that since like the current state regime is like... Uh, held by under BJP regime. So, of course, if they are supporting NPF, then they have to social some allegiance. Just like Congress, if they, are, if they are nominating one candidate, then, of course, their workers have to work for their candidates. But right now, at the moment, I don't see anything of them. It's because most of them, them are saying that uh, as long as the conflict is going on, we cannot right. focus on the elections. That's okay. what they are saying right now. Okay, we'll, come back to the, uh, right. we'll come back to the campaign and the candidates. Uh, thank you for giving us the uh, update. And... Um, would like to get to know more uh, in the uh, you know while, while we have the conversation later on. Okay, I'd like to come back to uh, Mr. Uh, Peter Adani, uh, the founder of Hills Hornbill Express. Uh, at the moment, uh, Mr. Renson has said that uh, the people are not uh, getting, I mean, taking much interest in the election because of the conflict. What about in Senapati? I would like to know what the people of uh, Senapati is up to at the moment. How is the political scenario? Most importantly, since one of the candidates, Mr. Uh, Kojon, is from the uh, Pomai community from Senapati district, uh, I'm sure it's been an uh, interesting environment. So uh, can you let us know, um, give us an update about the uh, present situation? Yeah. Uh, sorry, Thang, it's the situation in Senapati is such that uh, the dominant Paumai also happens to be the uh, the most uh, the biggest tribe, the dominant tribe. Right. Uh, when it comes to uh, political circle too, because of the number. Now, uh, with Kojon as the independent candidate, mm -hmm. not representing any of the party, any of the political party, and with his on sets of uh, uh, aspirations with his own sets of manifesto, uh, the kind of vote bank that he has right now is uh, massive. Okay. One factor is also because the Paumais are all out, not just because of Kojon, okay. but also this particular community is actually very united for the course to project their own uh, candidate plus to project the candidate uh, as someone from the district, not as from the community. Okay. They project in such a way that he is also a long sufferer hmm. seeking certain sympathy vote because uh, Kojon himself, a very qualified, experienced social activist who has served in uh, different Naga CSOs on different uh, occasions and then uh, when it comes to uh, his knowledge about the issue when you talk about a Naga uh, uh, Naga candidate 
90% of the Naga candidate will try to focus on uh, the thing called Naga issue, right. Indo-Naga peace process. Right. And Ko Jonathan is one person who is well-versed in this, a knowledgeable man who has, who has involved himself uh, into the cause. Okay. Now, uh, coming back to uh, the uh, how the dominant, how, how the Paumai tribes are uh, actually uh, getting the uh, voters in Sanapati. What we see here is uh, they have already impressed the other communities, okay. including the Mao, the Maram, the Thangal, the Zelenron community. Of course, the Zelenron community, there is a, a candidate called uh, Dr. Alison Abonmai. Right. But when you come to Sanapati, the Paumwais have also done their homework in uh, impressing the other tribe to vote for Kojon. And then uh, if even if the election date is tomorrow, in case, suppose, mm -hmm. most of us are actually willing to vote for uh, Kojon. Okay. So uh, and it's, it's an interesting to... update. Uh, you meant to say it, it's not just the Pomai community who is voting for uh, supporting uh, Kojon, but the, is it the majority of the uh, Senapati people or how, how is it at, at the moment? What about the Mao, the Maram, the Tangals? Whom are they supporting? I will not uh, represent any tribe here. Yeah. Uh, I'm giving you the general view of it. Yes, but, just a general view. Uh, like, uh, is, like I said, the uh, the Paumais have also uh, has also done their homework. And then they're also working, burning the uh, uh, midnight lamp to actually reach out to the other tribes in Sanapati. And then uh, that magic is actually working. Okay. I should say that. Okay. They're also reaching out to other different tribes apart from the thing. But uh, when it comes to Sanapati's context, I think most of the vo votes will actually go to Kojon. But it, it has another reverse impact is that it is also Sanapati itself is also a stronghold of, uh, as we we have witnessed in the previous years, is also a stronghold of the NPF. Right, right. But you know what kind of uh, being a Christian dominated uh, district? You know what is the uh, uh, what is the drawbacks that the NPF alliance with BJP <clears throat> has okay. also is, drawn is in? It, uh, is it giving? Uh, negative uh, kind of wave in the uh, Senapati district because uh, just because the uh, NPF candidate is backed by BJP? Is it giving ne negative uh, consequences? Yeah. I mean, honestly, politically, we have to uh, accept that. Okay. Because what we see uh, uh, in personal view, when you go and physically meet someone, or what we see in the social media, it is actually bombarded with anti-BJP sentiments, okay, especially not because not because uh, they don't like uh, Timothy Jimik, but it is the party that they are against. Okay. okay. So here comes the advantage of Mr. Alfred. Here comes the advantage of Kojon. Here comes the advantage of Alison Abonma. It's, it's an interesting update. Yeah. Just before I move on to our next panelist, just one question regarding this. Uh, we saw some updates on social media, which says, uh, uh, especially by the uh, Puma Union, uh, it mentioned something about uh, um, barring other parties or candidates to you know, uh, come to their jurisdiction for campaigning. Is that true? And how is that uh, affecting or uh, impacting the community over there? See, election campaigning, electioneering and then this electoral process is purely decided by one's own community or one, one's own political party in a in a strong in a strong uh, 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 bastion of bjp a congress campaign cannot be there or in a uh, in a strong uh, uh, this one where uh, the congress is very strong the bjp will not dare to step their foot in now here, here is also one very uh, strong community, very uh, possessive uh, community, who wants to make sure of the candidate, because at one point there has been also discussions and there has been also meeting where uh, certain elements has even asked Mr. Kojon to 
uh, withdraw his candidature. Right, right. But, but the community have come out, come out strongly, openly, not against anyone. That they also deserve certain chances. They also deserve certain qualifications to contest because that they have been uh, considering other candidates from other community all this while. And then that they also deserve a uh, chance this time. Okay. Based on so many other factors, uh, sen sentimental, emotional, uh, or even political uh, 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 political uh, issues that they have since the previous years, they have come with certain restrictions. They have come up with certain campaign techniques, okay. which I think even even yesterday. Uh, uh, some candidates or some campaigning were even barred uh, when some team of Kojon were not allowed to approach in Chandel also. Okay. See, I mean, it is based on party base or it is based on community. Right. So certain things, they might be there, but which I'm not here to, I'm not the competent authority to comment on whether it is right or wrong. But to be part of the campaign or the involvement of certain elements certain insurgents, insurgent groups or certain pressure groups or certain incident that we have witnessed in a cruel uh, against Mr. Alfred. There are certain things uh, that have been reported and then uh, we cannot uh, come to conclusion okay. of how uh, this is happening or how we should judge on it. Okay. Okay. It's an interesting update from Senapati as well. Thank you so much. I'll come back to you uh, in a moment. I'd like to uh, ask Mr. T.S. Mantham, the previous guest uh, who was with me in an interaction uh, mentioned something interesting about Chandil. He said uh, there there was, um, you know, very less vibe or wave about electoral politics in Chandil. And he also felt that uh, Chandil has been neglected in many ways in, for so many years. Uh, how, how is the political scenario at the moment uh, uh, getting up to the gearing up to the upcoming Lok Sabha election 2024. How how is the situation, uh, the condition of the people of Chandel at the moment? First of all, uh, thank you, Mr. Sorin, for this opportunity. Um, a very good evening to all my fellow panelists. Uh, yeah, you mentioned about uh, a gentleman who spoke about the scenarios in Chandel. Uh, I hope I'm audible enough. Yes, yes. Okay, well, uh, if, I, if I have to be absolutely honest, the palpable situation in Chandel is very lukewarm. I, I would rather say that uh, there is less, uh, uh, you know, uh, usually during the elections, we, we see lots of, you know, uh, rushes, we see lots of people running here and there, we see lots of sh sloganeering, we see lots of campaigning, we see lots of, uh, you know, candidates trying to, you know, uh, convince people. But what I have noticed in uh, the past few days in Chandel, it has been, uh, I would say, more of uh, more of tension, more of uh, I would rather say uh, exhaustion, more of uh, self-preservation. Yes, and uh, I could understand what the gentleman was talking about earlier. Is you know uh, the kind of treatment which Chandel has received in the past uh, the past eleven months or twelve months. Uh, any ordinary citizen, a layman of Chandel, has been feeling this uh, very, uh, you know, uh, the vibe of, you know, step, 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 step brotherly kind of a treatment which has, we have been receiving. Uh, whether it is, it is in terms of uh, infrastructure, whether it has been in terms of security, whether in terms of uh, facilities provided. So, I uh, from what I have noticed from my conversation or my participation in the uh, WhatsApp circles among the elders, among the village authorities, among the uh, young people as well. What I've noticed is that, uh, like um, a gentleman for Senapati has very, uh, very categor categor categorically he has stated about the the elements which are playing this important role. It's certainly the same here as well, and nobody is speaking out. Nobody is, uh, you know, willing to put their neck out. Nobody is willing to take the risk. So I would say Chandil is in a little bit of a catch-22 situation. It's a situation where people are not really sure. Maybe at the 11th hour, they'll make up their minds. 
maybe Chandil might throw some surprises. Okay. Uh, people in the closer circle, when they discuss, uh, it's more of, you know, of course, we are all aware of the BJP and their Hindutva's uh, model of uh, electioneering. And uh, on the opposite end, we, we are the majority, we are the majority of Christians, our traditions, everything. So the churches are playing their roles. Uh, we have CSOs who are playing their roles. And the public, they are, like I said earlier, it's a catch-22 situation. People are wondering whether it's about uh, proving their loyalty or is it about just, you know, submitting themselves to some kind of a dictator, some kind of a servitude that we have been, say, we have been seeing for, for a long time. We have been seeing that uh, I've seen educated people a bit hesitate to make that informed decisions. Maybe it's because of some uh, pressures which are coming from their families, maybe coming from their kings. Uh, so if I would say it's like a situation where it's to be or not to be, you know, like what Shakespeare has, uh, you know, uh, in a, has put it very uh, eloquently. So I would say the current scenario in Chandel is, of course, very lukewarm. Okay. At the same time, people are, and nobody is, uh, you know, playing their, uh, everybody's keeping the cards very close to their chest. Nobody really wants to, you know, uh, go berserk, wants to, you know, shout at the top of the lungs. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Maybe okay. Whatever. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for giving us the update. Um, it's good to know. Uh, just one question uh, before we move on to the next one. Is is it because is it uh, is the lukewarm environment because of what you said earlier? Is it because of the stepmotherly treatment uh, you received? Is it because of that situation? You think that uh, nothing's gonna change even if we participate in this election? So we leave it as it is. Is that the kind of uh, attitude at the moment? I would like to answer that in a in a in a in a in a point of view which is pretty much mine. Okay, uh, maybe it does not resonate with the masses. I would say uh, there is a confusion between ideology and the interpersonal relationships that we have. You know, uh, some of us we have the luxury of discussing the ideologies. Some of us we have the security of discussing what's happening in the rest of the country and compare it with what's happening in the ground zero or in our community, in our neighborhood. But some, unfortunately, don't have that kind of luxury. So for them, it's 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 pretty simple. Uh, just follow the diktat. Just uh, prove uh, that you are loyal. Prove that uh, something, uh, you know, something wrong does not happen or some kind of, uh, you know, some kind of uh, punishment or some kind of, the repercussion might not uh, come in future as well. So, like I said, Chandel is a, uh, when we compare it to the neighboring uh, Naga communities or Naga districts, Chandel is very precariously situated. I'm sure you're aware of the geopolitics you know, the, of Chandel's situation, you know? Uh, so, uh, uh, I think the gentleman who was speaking to you in the previous uh, panel discussion was talking about some uh, alternative route Thing, right, right, which he was right. speaking about again during the the past 11 years this conflict has uh, sort of you know instilled us with so much of fear instilled us with so much of uh, you know insecurity mm -hmm. with so much of uh, you know, uh, it's like we really don't have any cover we okay. don't really have any way we can survive okay. right uh, if we look at our neighbors they all have that luxury they all have that backup plans right mm -hmm. Maybe most of them, but when it comes to Chandel, we are left to our wits. We are left to our own protection. So uh, I would say that our people are, uh, you know, it's filled. The air is filled with that palpable, uh, you know, tension. It's uh, everybody is quiet. Everybody is uh, playing their card, uh, keeping their cards to their. Okay. So, so yeah. in one way, this uh, ongoing conflict has opened the eyes of the people of Chandel as well, right? So, uh, Absolutely. yeah, Absolutely. So next question to you is, uh, you've mentioned something, up, yes, uh, which is very interesting, the step, uh, motherly treatment which we have been re uh, receiving. I'd like to catch up this uh, question and then uh, give uh, ask you one more question, which is um, con considering, considering this uh, upcoming Lok Sabha election, what do you expect from the MPs? 
especially the MP who is who is to become an MP uh, once the election is conducted. What do you expect uh, from this MP, uh, whosoever it becomes the MP? Uh, what are the political aspirations from the people of Chandel? What what do you look forward from this MP, and what kind of an MP do you need? Uh, <clears throat> I would like to begin the answer by. Uh, putting into focus what uh, the, the previous MP, Dr. Loro, while uh, <clears throat> he, had, he might have the opportunity or maybe he did not have the opportunity, but right after coming out of the parliament, he, he said to the media that he was not allowed to speak. Yeah? And that is something very stark. That is very something very, uh, you know, very uh, sort of, uh, you know, gives a clear idea of the kind of position, the kind of seat, or the hot seat on which he's sitting. So as a Naga citizen, as a Naga uh, uh, tribal person who belongs from Chandil, first and foremost, we need somebody who, who is willing to sacrifice, who is willing to you know, uh, take the trouble, who is willing to take the reins of representing the Nagas, of representing uh, the tribals, or, uh, and be able to, you know, uh, speak it out, be able to take it to the higher level, be able to put across the troubles or the problems we are, we, that we are facing. Now, coming back to Chandel, uh, I would not like to reiterate the, the previous points of alternative routes, the political aspirations that you were talking about. Chandel, as many of us are aware, is pretty much, you know, uh, lacking in terms of uh, development. And uh, there are a lot of examples that in the past, uh, a lot of uh, schemes when it came to infrastructure, whether it was uh, construction of nursing hospital, uh, whether it was construction of some uh, some football ground, whether it was construction of some offices, all those schemes were taken away due to various other reasons. Okay. So Chandel has been very much behind in that aspect. I, I would also say when it comes to uh, education, when it comes to uh, you know uh, making our future generation more able-bodied, more, uh, uh, more, you, I would say, uh, politically involved, uh, more participatory in the elections. So we need some higher uh, institutions as well, right? Okay. We need some uh, uh, institutes where BA courses can be given, right? We need some institutions where teachers can be trained properly, right? So these are the things that I would say uh, apart from the security thing that I had said earlier about the alternative routes and all, these are the things which I wish. And of course, uh, I would like to put one more thing uh, along with our political aspiration is the preservation and conservation of our only lifeline river, which is Chakpi River, right. which is which is uh, dwindling, which is uh, suffering as we as years are passing by. So we need some concrete uh, plan. We need some concrete action to be undertaken so that uh, this river. Uh, you know, uh, it regains its, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's good condition. Okay. Uh, those are the points I would like. Great, great. Do, do you think our MP, whosoever becomes an MP, will be able to uh, achieve those aspirations which you have on your mind, which, which the people need? Do you think they are capable of doing that? Uh, well, they are capable. I'm sure they are all very good gentlemen with very good backgrounds, with very good educational qualifications, uh, coming from uh, Christian background as well. But, you know, there's a very interesting uh, line which says a pow power, right? Power corrupts and absolute power and something which is uh, visible with our prime minister for the past two terms. So uh, I hope, I hope that our wh whomsoever uh, gets elected, whomsoever is getting the mandate from the people uh, will have the uh, you know will have the, the fervor to you know visit the most distant naga villages right. to visit sit down with this you know listen to their pains listen to their uh, to to their uh, uh, to their requests and work steadfastly to improve the lives of the naga people okay. all over manipur hopefully hopefully Thank you so much. I'd like to come back to uh, Mr. Uh, Ransom Kumar. Yes, uh, you mentioned earlier something about the Meite community not taking much interest in the election because of the ongoing conflict with the uh, cookie community. Um, even though uh, that's one of the uh, situation at the moment, 
uh, would like to get to know what the people of uh, your, I mean, uh, what the Maitai community aspires, their aspiration from the MP, whosoever becomes the MP. Uh, at the moment, yes, the conflict is going on, but still then, I'm sure the, you must, uh, your community must have some aspirations, especially from these eight assembly constituencies. What do you think the people uh, requires, they dream of, they aspire to from the, uh, I mean, MP? So today, uh, surprisingly, I found one Facebook post which needs to be fact-checked. But that says that uh, in the last five years, in the last time, Dr. Ranjan, who is the inner MP, he raises 10 questions and in the parliament in the last five years, and his attendance rate was something less than 70%. Okay. Then Dr. Lorho asked around 39 questions, and his attendance was 86-87%. Mm -hmm. But again, surprisingly, I thought that they asked more questions than I was expecting because I always thought that they were not speaking at all. Right. And uh, the previous uh, speaker has also just mentioned that they were not allowed to speak. Hmm. So right now the community aspiration should be, if we were not in the conflict situation, it could have been different. But right now in the violence, uh, so that we can start mediation, negotiation process and all, uh, that's one thing. But again, I also saw one Facebook post. It's just I'm just saying this because these these are the voices of the civilians. Okay. So they are saying that I will vote for someone who won't arrest me for critiquing the regime or critiquing the person or because critiquing the leader. So these are the voices going around in like civilians. Mm -hmm. So uh, for community aspirations, I mean, I personally don't think because uh, candidates like once they enter into a system the systems become so corrupted that they become the part of the system. So for right now, as a community, which is arguably when like uh, the ST demand, arguably the ST, ST dem demand is considered to be the uh, causal point for the conflict. But again, something which is considered to be constitutional safeguard for the Maitri communities is seen as threatened to the other community. Mm -hmm. That's the system. So in that kind of system, which things that or which provides one constitutional, constitutional safeguard from one community for one community, like seemingly uh, seem to be seen as uh, threatened to another community, what kind of system or what kind of constitutional provision is that? So there need to be massive changes or like, I mean, the communities also need to understand each other, the fears, where the fears arises from, what the communities, what are our sufferings? So as long as we don't consider or we, we are not very empathetic to these fears and needs, then I don't think uh, Maiti community would be very hard to appeal. But of course, there will be workers for the political parties at the ground level who will be voting for them, okay. I'm sure. But right now, I, I haven't seen any campaigns and visits from the candidates themselves. But right now, that's the moment uh, thing. But I personally feel the aspirations right now is that uh, violence should be somehow ended, the conflict. Then after that, they will be able to articulate their needs and uh, development things. But uh, I'm very grateful to hear that about the Sapi River is issue because uh, right now in this, um, like this developmental aggression in many parts of Manipur, dams and rivers, these are something that needs to be properly reviewed, ensuring environmental fact check, uh, how much they are going to, some kind of environmental assessment because before uh, implementing all those developmental activities and acts. So that's what I think. Okay, great. Uh, uh, yes, just uh, before I move on to our next uh, panelist, I'd like to ask one more interesting question, which is uh, uh, some some people um, amongst the public, there is an apprehension or there is an, uh, a rumor or an opinion saying that the an organization like Arambai Tango might involve actively uh, in the upcoming election. Do you think um, they will they will have a say in this election? And do you think the people of the... Um, the Maitre community, especially from these eight assembly constituencies, will follow their, uh, is, I mean, their directions or uh, their appeal or whatever it is. If in case they involve, do you think uh, it will go uh, as per their say? Because at the moment uh, we we feel that uh, they are one of the most influential groups, especially in the valley. How do we feel about that? Of course, there. Are, yeah. Yeah, of course, there are rumors, there are propagandas, but the leader has uh, written in his Facebook post that there won't be. Uh, joining this electoral politics. That's what the leader says. 
and there are rumors there are propaganda there are rumors that uh, even bimolakism the inner candidate was uh, in his campaign some people gun gun like i mean uh, fired some shots right so we need to let's see what happens but as of now the leader says they are not involved in that so let, we need to wait for the reports and something like that but right now in the outer constituencies there is no much uh, this election thing happening on but in in inner constituencies i'm sure people are campaigning and this kind of rumors are going on okay thank you, thank you um, sir R ransom i'd like to ask mr uh, peter adani uh, yeah we have heard from <coughs> chandel and the uh, from the Maite community would like to get an update from the Senapati district as well how what, what are the uh, political aspirations the people of Chandel seek and then um, do you think these are achievable or um, are whosoever becomes MP from these four candidates do you think they are capable of um, giving the demands uh, achieving the demands and aspirations of the people of uh, Senapati uh. I want to be uh, on the both side, not being too confident also, okay. or not being too, uh, too too pessimist about it also, because uh, honestly, we have seen uh, in the previous tenure to a uh, Naga MP. Before that, we have seen uh, Thangso Baite. Right. who will be speaking about his own community. Now, when it comes to Naga MP, one of the core issue or a candidate, number one manifesto will be to resolve, mm -hmm. to resolve the pending Indo-Naga issue. I mean, for how long it will go on? For how long should... We consider this as a political political man. For how long should this become a uh, this become an issue that uh, this becomes an issue which we we go we go, go on putting it on like fighting fighting it on and then like. Uh, every elections, even including the MLA election, we put it as an agenda mm -hmm. just to win someone's attention. Are we actually coming to the grassroots level? I come from a village where even the school structure, the, the school structure is so bad, so pathetic that the veranda of that school where you're 80 students are going to school every day and then during the election you are casting your vote, that veranda is standing on one pillar. Mm -hmm. I mean, let us get to grassroots level is my point. Let us talk about the primary health center. You and I being in the town area enjoys uh, hospital fac facilities or coming to the best uh, medical uh, centers in, in Infal. We have the best healthcare centers in in Manipur based in Infal but what about those uh, children, those mothers or our dying parents coming all the way 60, 80, 100 kilometers from remote areas without proper healthcare, without school the political aspiration of the Nagas we take it as a very big issue but when you are not able to even speak five minutes on that issue and then that being noted by the other MPs, by the speaker, by the ruling MPs, when, uh, by the ruling government in the center. I mean, should we go on talking about this issue on and on and prolong while our people back home are dying of being denial of basic facilities like health, like education, or like roads. I mean, the height of corruptions, mm. or the 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 height of uh, height of uh, the height of 
law and order situation. If, if we have to talk, go to the parliament. And if you are being a member of a parliament of certain political party, you have to prove yourself, not just take the mic and then scream back at home. And then when you're in Delhi, in the, inside the parliament, you are being muted by your own party. Then why do you represent that party? It's, it's about Manipur is one neglected state, irrespective of any community, irrespective of any political party. It is about denial of certain basic amenities to our own people, like one of our members said. You're talking about certain environmental issues. You're talking about certain denial of uh, uh, basic needs of our people. But that cannot be... Uh, uh, the political aspiration cannot be the stumbling block of these amenities. You you deserve to have it. Right. Or let us talk about uh, uh, let us talk about other issues, other political issues. You come back home and you complain of being denied, being muted by uh, uh, your own political party. I mean, it's very unfortunate. And Manipur MPs. And then those MPs from the Northeast are the worst performers, sadly, including including uh, uh, top politicians like Kiran Rijiju. Mm -hmm. I mean, not because he cannot speak, but it is also, also, the, also the political party that continues to dominate on other issue. Or you please go uh, in depth Maybe in the coming days, you'll be able to discuss the in-depth the manifestos of certain political parties. I mean, where are the minorities? Or where are the issues of this uh, uh, delimitation that should be happening? Or uh, where are the issues of census that is being denied to a district like Sanapati? Our census is being recorded, in, uh, being missed out since 2011. Our census today is of past years, not the latest one. Because of the denial of delimitation, we, ha we are being denied certain political advantages. Or even say it is uh, MP uh, uh, Lok Sabha election or, or the outer constituencies. How certain, uh, certain districts and then certain communities are being included in the outer and then denied to contest elections. Hmm. I mean, these are certain things that needs to be addressed. Right. Right. Instead of going in a complex way of uh, putting up your ma manifesto, which is not achievable in five years. Right. I mean, my point here is, let us be realistic. Right. Right. Let us start from the grassroots and then talk about political aspirations. Yes, thank you for highlighting the issues we have been facing. And uh, you have been stressing can about... I, I, sorry, can I just uh, chip in with my uh, with my one minute of, uh, you know, a little bit of as my views regarding what Brother has just spoken mm -hmm. about? Okay, go on. Yeah, please. Uh, from, what, from what I have observed is uh, certain political parties, I may not name them, that's open to interpretations. Uh, there is uh, this so-called, uh, you know, mentality that they have been given this God-given right. They have been given some kind of, uh, you know, uh, you know, responsibility or blessing to, you know, to just raise to be the flag bearer of uh, Nagas, to be the flag bearer of the tribals. And if we if we uh, really talk about the electoral process, we really talk about our democracy, we really talk about uh, the citizens of how we participate in this uh, electoral process. Uh, we are still so much lagging in terms of that, uh, that education, that awareness, because we are all aware, we are all very much, uh, we understand that politics, it's not about, uh, it's not about something permanent, you know. Things change within a, within a fraction of a second, you know. Enemies become best of friends. Best of friends become enemies. And from what we have observed uh, in Chandel or in other hill areas or other Naga areas, they have so much of grudges. They have so much of uh, you know uh, bad histories. They have so much of you know uh, 
you know, a uh, lot of uh, stories, you know, they are very gory, they are very sad, unfortunate, but I think it's high time that our people need to come to a, you know, come to a point where they need to make a fresh start. They need to, you know, to, to sort of, you know, let go of those hangups, let go of those unfortunate incidents. History is history. There's something that we cannot change. What we can change is the way forward. What we can do is, is to make sure that we don't repeat the same mistakes. So when a political party, uh, who have sometimes uh, there are parties which are not very, uh, you know, uh, uh, marriageable with the people, but maybe the leader is very much marriageable with the community. There are times when the leader is not good enough, but maybe the party yeah. as an overall structure is good enough to look after the demands, the, the, the points, the aspirations of the people. So I feel that uh, maybe going forward, we need to inculcate that uh, political awareness that uh, this is not some kind of a dadagiri, that's what we call in Hindi, uh, some kind of, uh, you know, uh, bullying tactics or some kind of threatening tactics. It's after all a democracy. And I know I might sound, I might sound to be a very sore thumb out, uh, out here in this uh, discussion. And uh, maybe I'm op opening myself to some criticisms as well. But if we are to develop as a society, if we are to develop, if our people need to get educated, our young generation needs to participate. Uh, uh, let me just give you a small example of uh, the, the UPSC results that came out, right? UPSC results which came out and Chandil specifically, although we are clubbed with Technopol, what we have seen that in the past few years, only one, two commune, one, two tribes are being consistent in producing at least one, one success stories. Right, and Chandel as a whole, it's a big district. It's unfortunate that such success stories continue to, you know, uh, you know, give us just a, a faint dream, you know, a faint hope. So okay. this is something that we need to inculcate in our uh, grassroots level, like Brother has just uh, has spoken earlier about. Okay. And going forward, uh, not just you know listening to just one party, not just surrendering, you know, just bending down on your belly just for the sake of uh, some, uh, you know, cash, some bottles or some passion. I don't think that's the way forward for our tribal of or Naga community. And furthermore, I think since I'm getting this opportunity, I would say that maybe Nagas in Manipur need to just think about the Nagas in Manipur. Forget about the Nagas in Nagaland. All right? That, that's Forget an interesting that. comment. Yeah, we should. It's high time. And, and, and the sooner we realize it, uh, it will do wonders for us. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll come back to you. I was, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, since you want to supplement on this point, uh, yeah, I, I, I gave you time. I would like to ask um, Mr. <laughs> Peter Adani one more thing um, related to what you said. You have been mentioned, stressing on uh, on the MPs who were muted, who are not, uh, who are not courageous, or, I, I mean, as per your comment, who are not uh, speaking enough voicing out enough for the people you have been uh, mentioning about that. Do you think, do you think the four candidates which, you ha which we have, do you think they will be more or less the same as the previous MPs or do they have the capability, uh, the caliber to perform better than the rest of the MPs which we have had in the uh, past years? <clears throat> Given this uh, four uh, Naga candidates, I will, I mean, I will not rate them, I'll not do the ranking, but definitely among all of them, I prefer to pick uh, Mr. Kojon and uh, uh, Mr. Alfred. Okay. When it, come, when it comes to talking in the parliament or given the chance, God's grace. Okay. If one of them is given the chance, they'll be able to talk because to speak in the parliament with such limited time, mm -hmm. you cannot go on. You cannot go on talking around the bush. Right. You have to come to the point and certain things. When it comes to coming to the point, st striking that bullseye, you know, you have to have that experience and then you have to come from that kind of background. And I see these two candidates okay. having certain uh, qualifications 
one being one, oh, a veteran uh, politician and one being a, a social activist. And both of them encircle within that political field to talk about certain issues. So I will not uh, put in my hand into one particular candidate, but God's grace, if one of them is selected, okay. maybe uh, they'll be able to speak about certain not, things in the parliament. Why not uh, uh, Mr. Timothy Zimik and uh, Dr. Alison Abonmai? Are, are you I mean, of the opinion uh, that they will not be able to uh, speak enough? I mean, voice up for the people? Honestly, uh, they come from a background, they come from a background, a non-political background. One is a retired uh, government employee right. who, who has mastered himself in a certain uh, bureaucrat, uh, uh, bureaucracy, uh, that bureaucratic uh, knowledge. And one is coming from a background of being a musician. To be able to speak in the public of certain issues, especially when it comes to social issues, political issues, you have to also have certain experience, not just take out from the blue book, flip through some pages, and then tomorrow you give some uh, uh, some speech. It's not like that. By going to the field, understanding what is the problem in the grassroots level, as I mentioned, going to the villages and standing on the stage, holding the mic and raising certain flags raising certain flags of uh, the outcry of uh, certain issues of the people. Those are certain backgrounds we also must have. Okay. Yeah. Um, you have been... I don't say they are qualified. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, they are candidates for the uh, Lok Sabha election because uh, they are qualified. That's what we feel. Right. So, but uh, we have to choose one amongst the four. Right. So let us uh, discuss their merits and demerits, their qualities as well. So uh, uh, our people, I mean, our three gentlemen here, I think we have been stressing um, uh, about their personalities. I mean, the four candidates, we have been stressing more on, uh, more, on uh, more of them speaking about us, especially the uh, yeah, voters or especially of the Nagas in the parliament. We have been stressing much more on no, speaking in Parliament, speaking in Parliament. That's what uh, I've been uh, feeling, uh, not just on this interaction, but most of the interactions I've had. So do you think uh, this is the most required, the most required um, thing which an MP should do? Uh, Mr. Peter Adani has been talking about lots of development issues we have been facing, which has to be uh, start from the grassroots, which comes to, uh, you know, infrastructural development, right? So do you think uh, being an orator, being an orator is the uh, the most essential quality of an MP. Or do you think, for example, Mr. Timothy Zimik uh, was, he, he's a retired IRS. He was in the revenue department. Who knows much about the financial transaction, the developmental activity of the uh, government of India? So do, do you think he has an edge, he has an advantage uh, to work for the developmental activities, to work, uh, you know, especially on the infrastructure level where uh, the financial transaction happens. Do you think he has that, uh, don't you think he has that knowledge which is essential for us to, you know, infrastructurally develop? Do you think he has the edge over the three other candidates on this uh, particular, uh, you know, uh, field? Uh, can, I, can I just uh, go first? Sure, sure. Well, if oratory was the only criteria, then I think there is no one who can uh, defeat BJP for sure. They have lots of gems like Sambit Patra, mm -hmm. uh, PM himself, and the amount of, uh, you know, lies, the amount of, uh, you know, uh, bombastic lies they throw around. The whole country listens to them in rapt attention. And probably that's one reason why they have been, you know, uh, you know I don't know, somehow winning elections, uh, dubiously, I must say. So coming back to the point where you mentioned about whether uh, oratory is the only criteria. No, not really. I mean, if given the opportunity, even the previous uh, MP, Dr. Loro, uh, in his uh, comfortable space, also he speaks well. That, right. That's not an issue. And when I was called, when I was mentioning about that incident which happened in uh, Parliament, 
uh, some may say he was not given time. Some may say maybe he was not very uh, forceful enough. But when when we talk about a leader who is uh, who is dynamic, who is very uh, you know invested, who is ready to take the responsibility, who has the integrity, and I'm sure all these four candidates have uh, oodles of. Uh, you know, integrity, oodles of experience. You have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, they have lots of character in them and there's no doubting for sure. But we need somebody who is, you know, who is able to put, put his neck out and say that these are my people. Don't you dare touch them, right? These are, these are the people for whom I'm standing and should anything happen, should anything unbecoming happens, I'm willing to go to the ends of the earth to, you know, take, uh, you know, to take some action or, you know, to, to take it to the higher authorities. So that conviction, that is something that I strongly believe that our leaders should exhibit. I hope that these leaders, uh, during their village visits, during the meetings, I'm sure they must be speaking a lot of beautiful things, lots of sweet, sweet things. But leadership, as we all know, it's, it's about when the shit hits the fan, right? Who will stay back and who... And, when people are running here and there, who will stay back and who will take the responsibility? So, us Nagas, we are very good in talking. We have lots of brilliant people who tell amazing folk stories. We have people who can, you know, talk all night. You know, give all the uh, knowledge of the world, even the uh, par paranormal activities also. But we need a leader who is realistic, somebody who is, uh, you know, whose ears are very much uh, connected to the grassroots level. You know. Somebody who can, uh, you know, bring the level of uh, developments, who can bring the level of uh, the, the infrastructure which uh, our people desperately need. Okay. And I would say uh, in relation to the conflict that we have seen, uh, I, I must say it's unbelievable. The, the, uh, luckily, I was not present in the 90s where Manipur was considered to be one of the darkest you know, which was considered to be the darkest, uh, you know, uh, period that Manipur has ever faced. Okay. Faced, but the past eleven months that I have seen, it's horrendous. It's horrendous, and still now right. it's going on. You know, we uh, have so yes, much sir, of things. Of, yeah, sorry to interrupt you, but I'd like to get an opinion yeah. of you of of the these four candidates which we have at the moment. Give us your fair, genuine opinion both merits and demerits of the four candidates? Uh, I cannot rank them because I don't know yeah, yeah. them personally. Not, not, not in order of uh, who is better and who is not. But how do you see, for example, uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Allison, how do you see uh, Kojon, how do you see Alfred, how do you see Timothy? They're, so that, you know, um, people might get a little bit of knowledge about uh, how you feel which might impact their, you know, decision-making as well. Seriously, if I talk about the NPF candidate, uh, Mr. Timothy, given his background, given his, uh, uh, you know, oodles of experience that he comes with, but the, the alliance thing, it's, it really bugs me, the alliance thing. And we have seen that Dr. Lorho has faced that predicament, right, okay. that situation. So I'm not really optimistic how... Uh, Mr. Timothy is going to, you know, do better than him. Is the uh, party so, affiliation, does that really matter? Is that party affiliation? Party affiliation. Okay. Uh, people may not agree with me, but I really find it difficult to see whether his individuality will stand out, whether his, uh, you know, his, uh, his uh, <clears throat> conviction, his integrity will stand out because uh, we have seen a lot of uh, BJP's examples, their nefarious activities uh, all throughout the years. So I will okay. just stop myself with Mr. Timothy there. All right. But uh, when it comes to Kojon, again, I don't know him personally, but going according to uh, the stories that have come up, the kind of uh, forwards that I have received, the kinds of uh, research things that I have seen, he looks a person, somebody who is very, uh, who's, uh, who's filled with conviction, I would say, somebody who has, uh, who has you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, who has invested a lot of time, uh, you know, with grassroots people, with grassroots politics as well. So maybe there he might get some brownie points, I would say. Okay. Uh, coming to Dr. Uh, Alison Abomai, all I know is that he's a gospel singer. Right. So I think he will score brownie points with the uh, 
the the maybe the the Christian part. I guess maybe the Christian uh, population. I would say I don't know. Uh, maybe you never know about it. And then uh, uh, Mr. Alfred, uh, I haven't met. I haven't met him personally as well. But uh, anyone that I have met tells me that he's a very voracious reader. He's a very dynamic speaker. He's not afraid to raise any point. He is, uh, you know, when he shoots, he shoots. Uh, he doesn't care who is in front of him. So maybe amongst them, he might be the best orator, probably. Okay. But you, you, you never know. You never know how the politics, uh, the biggest democracy in India, every day lots of uh, surprises are thrown out. Okay. These four candidates, we are that these are all four are Nagas. Who do you Whoever think, gets who do you the, think the uh, who do you think the people of Chandel will give the most vote amongst the, these four candidates? Chandel is uh, is in a cross whether to listen to the mind or to follow the dictate or to follow the directives. So everybody, like I said before, everybody is hiding their cards deep inside their chest, right? And it's only on the polling day. It's only because uh, the WhatsApp conversations, the okay. discussion that are going around, nobody's Amen. willing to, you know, uh, make it very clear. Okay. okay. So it's a harsh kind of, uh, you know, uh, environment right now. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for uh, giving us uh, important points, which uh, which is very interesting and then it's going to be helpful as well. I'd like to uh, ask Mr. Uh, Renson, uh, just before I move on to the uh, candidates, I'd like to know... Uh, we have, I mean, from the even this uh, from this discussion as well, uh, we we feel that sometimes yes, it's just uh, eight assembly constituencies which uh, is a part of the ultra parliamentary constituency. Do you think our MPs who has been an MP, uh, you know, in the past as well, do you think they focus only on the tribal areas? Do you think uh, the eight assembly constituencies of the Métis community has been neglected? Do you think they work for the Métis community as well? Oh, they will. They also do come in events and functions. That's one thing. Okay. But to be honest, like it's not just about after all inner. I mean, are have have MPs been really effective? Like having choosing these elections, like parliamentary elections, uh, this general assembly constituency elections is another thing. But this Lok Sabha election, choosing two candidates from Manipur, uh, the uh, like those who have held this post before also. Have they truly represented people before also? How many times have they raised? There has been intellectuals, there has been good orators, right. all the kind of good qualities we would like to see in a leader. We have nominated them, we have given them votes, they have won. But the turnout is like, I mean, it's all visible that it's not really effective. The kind of system it's there. I also had mentioned in the uh, my earlier statement that if one demand of one uh, community seems threatened to another community, this means that that kind of system is somehow deepening or segregating the two communities under that system only. So that's my point of view. And I also feel that uh, regarding the candidate, like leaders have been doing emotion based. They are not talking about issue based. They are not doing issue based politics. Rather, they are doing uh, try, trying to appeal to sentiments, emotions. And that's another thing. And just at constituencies, they don't really care about MP elections. It's about just about having sending two people that can okay. increase the seats of the that political party in the parliament. Mm -hmm. So having a voice in the parliament is very necessary in today's time. I know it's very important and critical. But again, let's let, let's think that one like the leaders right now, we the we so and any one of them who is going to win, let's just take that they are good orators, they are good persons. And they went to the uh, they go to the parliament. They speak, they speak up. Let's imagine that. But in that situation, what is the parliament going to do? Are they really going to listen? Is the kind of system is ready to listen to the voices of Nordis, the voice of Manipur? Right. Last time I saw like one speaker from, sorry, I think her name is Mahua Moitra, the Trinamul Congress MP. She was thrown out of the parliament for speaking, uh, like raising people's voices. So that's the kind of system, the setup that we are having right now. So I am very skeptical, to be honest, like I would like to take a different stand on this. So I'm very skeptical about this MP election, not, not only about MP election, the kind of constitutional setup, the kind of parliamentary democracy we are having now. There needs to be massive changes. Mm -hmm. okay. It seems like a myth. The kind of representation is kind of myth. Right. 
But yeah. yes, it's an interesting point uh, you have uh, given to uh, share with us. But since, yeah, even though we are in this system, uh, we are to uh, like an uh, MP that is, uh, you know, uh, compulsory. I mean, since we have this in your system. So um, like the other two gentlemen who have uh, mentioned about being an orator, a good orator, or uh, the social issues which we have, uh, who do you think? Who do you think is, I mean, as an MP, do you think... Uh, being a good orator, do you rate? Yours, I mean, amongst these uh, candidates, do you would you rate a good orator uh, to be to be able to represent us better, or would you rate a person who brings um, infrastructure development uh, changes in the uh, social issues which you are facing? Do you think which one would you rate better among these two, or who which one is the one which our society really needs? I mean, the society is very diverse, and only one quality cannot. Okay. be a representation of that candidate on this. So he needs a lot of qualities, not only oratory, but also article, like uh, the kind of knowledge, the kind of information about public issues, right. all are like very important. So I have seen leaders who are, who don't have very good oratory skills, but he has other ways to express people's voices, right. maybe but maybe through writing. But oratory is very important component of that. That's how I think, okay. but yeah. And they need to really understand people. That's so that should be the this four candidates. Do you think a, a candidate or two or even the four of them? Do you think they have the oratory skill? They have the uh, you know um, the ability to understand the social issues and then to deliver deliver you know uh, the issue. I mean uh, solve the issues we have been facing. Do you yeah. think they have these abilities? Right. Please uh, share their. You know, merits and demerits, or their qualities, like uh, Mr. Martin has said earlier. Share something. Mm, honestly, yeah. yeah. Honestly, uh, I haven't seen any of their campaigns in these constituencies, so that's one. Like, I don't know much about it, but I have seen some Facebook videos of some leaders. I have seen one video of uh, Abon Mai, Dr. Abon Mai. I have seen videos of Timothy. I have seen videos of Dr. Al uh, Alfred Arthur. Uh, yeah, yeah. Am I saying the right name, Arthur? Yes, Alfred Arthur, yes. Yeah, yeah. Sorry for that. So uh, they all seem to be appealing the people at that crowd. The crowds are clapping. That's what I see. But they're kind of, so if they are saying something and if they are contesting elections, they must have some goodwill to be like uh, taken as from the first value. So they must have their interest. They must have wanted to be, represent people. So from their videos, they seem to want to do something for the people. That's all I see. But other than that, I haven't seen any of their campaigns in this constituency, so okay. I don't have Who do more you think? of a uh, like, Who do you think is, the, is getting the maximum vote from the Maitre community? Just a wild guess. Uh, <laughs> so I think, so considering the, the kind of government we are having right now, so the kind of government we are having right now has grassroots level workers who will vote their allegiance no matter what happens. Okay. Like, like, I mean, even though, like, this kind of people, they are ready to show any kind of allegiance to them. So, even though they are not, like, I don't see any of the campaigns right now, but if the election is nearer, like, since it's on 26th right now, I don't see any of the campaigns. But just a week before, maybe I will be able to see. But words are there that uh, in BJP dominated areas or in the constituencies where they are, they are having BJP MLS or who are supporting BJP in the state regime, they are going to give their votes to BJP, that's for sure. That's how election number games is uh, turning on, and they need to prove that. From BJP. Uh, and, and, yeah, and, and uh, these are mostly Tawal district also. In Tawal, surprisingly, there is Ibobi, there is Surya Kumar, who are Congress MLAs also. Also in their constituencies, at least, I, I'm, even though people are saying they won't participate, but there will be boot caps if, like, somehow there, there will be some kind of uh, participation, electoral participation in the process if people are not part participating. Okay. There may be some kind of manipulation also. So if it happens to be in a perfect safe environment, if people are voting, then it would be like, I think uh, these two parties will be getting maximum votes, considering it's because it's the fact that they have some workers at the ground level, grassroots okay. level. Even if right. the majority voters are, turnout is very less, but these candidates will be having some uh, good share. That's what I think. Interesting update. Okay, I'll, I'd like to come back lastly to uh, Mr. Uh, Peter Adani. Uh, actually, uh, I would like to repeat the question which was answered by uh, Mr. Mantum. Uh, you have been stressing on 
the MPs uh, representing the voice of the people speaking in the parliament. Uh, do you rate yourself, uh, you know, being a good orator uh, to the, um, for example, a person, a candidate who has the ability to solve the issues uh, of the society, of the people, or also bring development, I mean, infrastructural development. Which one do you think is the, you know, immediate need of the people? Uh, just because they can talk uh, does not actually delivers. Right. You have to uh, get up from the chair, from the bed, go around, visit the people, see the ground reality, and then place the issue uh, in the right place, and then work out. The time for uh, our uh, previous MP, Dr. Uh, Lawyer was like shortened just because of the COVID situation. Then again, just before the conclusion of his uh, this uh, tenure, the Manipur crisis came up. Right. I mean, these are certain difficulties we have to also understand. But uh, I'm not putting it focusing on only on how you speak in the parliament. What also matters is how you perform in the parliament also. Even if you are able to speak, if you are talking some uh, craps, I mean, uh, it's no use. Just that you have to also run around the corridors of uh, different ministry to run around for the projects. Right. And get connected to the state government here. I'm not talking only about just because you are able to speak uh, some good English, you're only able to convince during the campaign. I mean, if you are from Manipur, you must know one good sets of Maitelon also. You have to mingle with them also. Go and uh, 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 sit with them, uh, listen to their grievances also. It's also about uh, uh, going, uh, my point here is, going to the people, connecting the people. Right. That's why I said, the point where I am actually uh, concentrating zero in on uh, uh, Alfred and then Kojon is that their connection with the people, especially the, with the people of Manipur and especially the uh, const constituency in the, in the outer, their connection is more. Okay. That is my point. Okay. Not about only able to talk, right. but how you go and connect with the people of uh, uh, the people at uh, the Maiti Pangan uh, in one uh, district or another uh, Maiti community in uh, Kakching okay. or another community okay. in Ukrul. Right. I mean, these are different right. sets of uh, homework you have to do it, not only about most, talking. Most of our people, uh, when it comes to parliament, we have been stressing on, you know, raising our voice, speak for us. So, so uh, we, I mean, being a good orator is not the only criteria. That's, that's what uh, we have been discussing. We, we need to connect with the people. Uh, we need to understand the issues uh, that our people is facing. And then we need to find solutions and then deliver. That, that's what uh, our conclusion has been. It's good. And then I think this is going to be helpful for uh, the voters as, as well. Um, I'd like to ask Mr. Pitani, uh, Peter Adani about the same, which I've asked the other two guests. Uh, kindly share us your genuine opinion how you see your uh, how you see the four candidates uh the their good qualities uh they are you know of course they are all human beings they might have their weaknesses uh, for example which qualities of a candidate do you think will uh, make him i mean gain more votes or what kind what kind of qualities which he possesses for example um, uh, mr mantung has been talking about the party aff affiliation of an mp for example uh, such might you know decrease the votes of uh, the candidate. So we'd like to get an honest, uh, just your opinion view or the general view of the people of Senapati. Yeah, uh, I agree with uh, this one. With, when it comes to uh, the, the problem with NPF alliance with BJP, here the problem, like I 
I've also stated before, here the problem is not with Timothy Jimmick. Okay. Here the problem is NPF unholy alliance with BJP. It's not with about it's not it's not about uh, how you uh, put these two parties together uh, because of certain thing in the past. They are a coalition here in uh, Manipur. They are a coalition there in uh, Nagaland. Why should they have a problem? But with this recent incident that is happening in Manipur, and then the kind of incident, num numerous incident that we see on the minorities, especially the Christians in the mainland India. This is one big impact. This is, this is one big uh, wave of discontentment among the minorities. Or you see at the, uh, you see uh, the, uh, the manifesto of the BJP. You're talking about the development of uh, a city of Ayodhya. But you, you do not see even a, you see, you do not see even a single line of uh, uh, talking about for the minorities. Or you are talking about the manifesto of Manipur. When it comes to BJP, okay. you're not talking about how to stop this violence. How to bring together the resolution of this okay. conflict. Let me just uh, interrupt, interrupt here. Uh, what is happening with the BJP and the rest of India? Do you think it will, I mean, how, how is it going to impact uh, uh, the an NPF MP in case he gets elected? Because he is going to be an NPF MP, uh, not a BJP MP. And then also coming back to their affiliation, uh, most of our Naga MLAs, be it NPF, be it MPP, uh, they are in coalition with the uh, BJP government in Manipur. So is, is that is that also an issue? Definitely. The majority the majority party here is BJP. Right. Even in Manipur College How has that government. Impacted uh, or affected our society, uh, contextualizing the Nagas or the tribals of Manipur. The hard reality is that they will not like me. The hard reality is that are these political parties uh, in coalition with the BJP able to speak when they disagree with the government? Are they able to speak in the Manipur Assembly? That exactly will happen in Parliament. Okay. They are a coalition, they're a coalition party. Are they able to speak in Parliament? No. Even a BJP MP is not able to speak from a state like Manipur where you have just, just two Lok Sabha. You're just a minority. Even if you are from, even if you are belong to a party, you just belong to a small state called Manipur. Okay. Manipur does not feature in that list of priority. Okay. All right. I'll that is my back. point. It's yeah. not about the person. We're running out of time, so I'll, I'll just cut you short. I'm so sorry for that. But uh, let's talk about Congress. It's also a national party. It's also a national party. Do you think it will happen? I mean, the same for in, in case if Alfred gets elected, do you think he will be controlled by the party politics? And also this religion issue thing, um, people say, I mean, this is the opinion. It happens during the rule of the Congress as well, since we are in a Hindu majority country. Also, what of the uh, independent, two independent candidates, Dr. Alison Abonmine, uh, uh, Kojon, they are independent. Do you think they'll be, they'll be able to do enough uh, since because uh, they, they don't have a party, they're just alone. Yeah, I mean, uh, if, you, if you're going along with a party, uh, which is also being understood as a secular party, like Congress, or being independent, you can have certain reservation or you can have certain confidence that they'll be able to uh, speak uh, based on a larger or on a more secular note rather than focusing on only on certain religious uh, issues. <clears throat> like you said, there are certain political parties in the name of religion has tried to connect the majority community who
who happens to be of that religion. Now, religion is not supposed to be part of this politics. Leave religion away from this politics. But unfortunately, today you live in a country where religion is actually forced into politics. Okay. But we have seen in the previous years, especially during the Congress government, we don't see this kind of radical uh, movement where you try to focus so much into one religion. And then that people come following you and then you just like do that massive mm -hmm. uh, publicity based on that religious functions. Okay. But where are the minorities? The minorities, you are also an elected member because of the minorities too. <clears throat> And these minorities are the ones also the, the Christians, the Muslims are also a dominant community in, in other countries, not only in India. Okay. Uh, I'd like to I'd like to interrupt you there and then uh, give you the time to uh, say the qualities, the good and the uh, weakness of the four candidates. You have mentioned a bit about Timothy. Let's get to know about Alfred uh, Kojon and then uh, Dr. Alison. How do you how do you see how do you see them? Uh, when it comes to uh, Doctor Ellison, uh, he's a so he, uh, in his bio data he had mentioned that he's a uh, social activist. Okay, fine, but people see him more as a gospel cowboy. Okay, as a as a musician, mm -hmm. as a theologian. I'm okay with that. When it comes to Kojon, Kojon is someone who has not been an elected member. But among all the four candidates, he is the most humble soul. Okay. Down to earth person. Okay. Who has more connection with the people and who knows who has walked that dusty road to reach that village. To, see, to understand that issue. Okay. When it comes to Alfred, a well-educated, coming from, from a background of political background, I will definitely say uh, uh, Silver Spoon, uh, Silver Spoon uh, Fed, right. but definitely not spoiled. Okay. He's politically very strong, well-educated, and he knows the issue he's talking he was he, he was defending so much the adc bill uh, 2022 he was defending so much mm -hmm. just that it did not go through i mean when you have certain things when when you want to defend certain issue and you are well aware of it okay. that is also one very good conviction what, where what you can also the... pursue uh, I interrupted you when you were uh, talking about Timothy. I'm sorry. Uh, you can say something. Yeah. Well. Timothy, Timothy is one person, is also one person, very educated, from a bu bureaucratic, very disciplined background, who is well-versed when it comes to uh, his own speciality of uh, being an IRS. But that does not qualify him to, to see through the glasses of the... Uh, grassroots level, he has to suddenly come down, get down from his that uh, uh, that I chair. Okay, all right. Uh, and just, to just, see uh, what is there. Topic. Just last uh, question: uh, Who who do you think is getting the majority of the vote in uh, Senapati? Is it is it Kojan because of Pomai, or, and who is coming second? Kojan is first. Okay. And then, uh, then next, uh, Timothy Jimmy. Okay. Third will be Alfred. And then Dr. Ellison. Thank you. I I'm in my bed. Yeah, all right. All right, gentlemen, uh, we have taken a long... I thought it's going to be a short interaction, but then it's uh, getting interesting and interesting, and we have stretched for a very long time. I'd like to, uh, you know, end yeah. our conversation here. Yeah, I, I will give you... Uh, I'll come to you. I'll, I'll give you your uh, closing remark. I'll give time for closing yeah, yeah. remark. 
as closing remark. Uh, I'll give you a couple of minutes each. Uh, but um, here's an interesting, interesting question, which uh, I would like you to answer as a closing remark. Are uh, the cookie community, the cookie community has not, uh, you know, come up with a candidate this time. And then uh, some of the organization is threatening to boycott the election. Do you think they, they, I mean, what was the reason behind, in your opinion, of them not uh, giving, I mean, coming up with an, a candidate? And also, do you think uh, they, they have the, you know, deciding factor in their head in case they vote or they don't vote? Um, for this closing remark, uh, let's let's start with uh, uh, Mantu, Mr. Mantu. <clears throat> I. Uh, I will not. I would. I would not like to go into the nitty gritties of uh, this kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, the votes or you know why uh, they won't vote. Or means uh, maybe they will vote at the last minute. I can't say that. Uh, I don't have a crystal ball in my hand. Mm -hmm. But this is, as a citizen, don't you think this is such a green, uh, you know, proof of how uh, how important how. Uh, useless or you can say how uh, pathetic the double engine circuit has has worked so far that uh, the entire community one can, we are not here to judge them we are not here to talk about the pros and cons mm -hmm. but if an entire community entire population chooses to abstain from electoral politics it's such a represent you know sad representation of this so called double engine circuit so i think uh, central government state government both uh, both need to look into their, you know, into their uh, their hearts, which I don't really expect them to, and you know, because the level, because there has been no accountability, there has been no uh, corrective actions, there has been no initiation of any kind of, uh, you know, uh, dialogues that I would say to go forward. Do, do you think so they, they, have, you they are the me, deciding factor of this election? Deciding factors. Uh, <clears throat> Since they don't have a candidate, I, I, I can't put my finger on it for 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 certain reason, uh, because uh, from from what I have observed in the past few months, that uh, cookies or uh, yeah, I would say cookies in general, um, they are they are very united. I can see that they are very united, very educated, and. Uh, uh, they have people in high places. Uh, of course, Maitis also have lots of people in their high places. But what I have seen that cookies, uh, rarely you would see them acting in a very knee-jerk uh, kind of a, uh, movement. You know, it's pretty orchestrated in a way. Uh, there's a certain method to their actions. So now that we are getting this kind of some fake uh, uh, circulations or some kind of announce uh, announcements which are being made, still I can't really put myself okay. to believe or you know read too much into it okay. lastly before the conversation goes too long so sometimes when people ask me that uh, modi sarkar this time will cross 400 right and there's another popular slogan which is going on if not modi then who right mm -hmm. i would say even an empty chair and even an even just a tree even just a, uh, just some stone you know I would okay. say as long as it does not divide people, as long as it does not poison the minds of the people, as long as it does not kill people, as long as it doesn't make the life of people so 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 stressful. And the way Manipur has been uh, treated, I mean, okay. it's such a glaring example, an eye opener for the rest of the country as well. That right. uh, history is complete with how uh, Mizoram was treated. History is repeated uh, while the conflict in Manipur was happening, how Tripura was treated, how okay. Assam has been treated in the past, how Arunachal is on, was on the verge of boiling over as well. So when you see this pattern, it, can, it just gives a very glaring example that Northeast, it, it's very much low in terms of uh, yeah, I'll, I'll importance. Uh, we'll, we'll have to discuss that in our next episode. Uh, let, let's uh, yeah. try to end it here because yeah, we're running out of time. I'll uh, give the time to Mr. Uh, Ransom Kumar uh, on the questions which I asked. Uh, why do you think the cookie community is not, uh, you know, uh, they don't have a candidate on this election? Why do you think, if, if you have an answer to that, or if you have an opinion to that, and do you think they have the uh, deciding factor in their hand? Because 
um, they don't have a candidate at the moment. If they, like uh, Mr. Mantuna has mentioned, they are very united. If they, in a way, uh, gets united and vote for a, a single candidate, that person has the uh, upper hand. So what, in your opinion, uh, I mean, what is your opinion on this uh, question? Uh, my answer would be, of course, this is number game, and of course, they would play a big part, but they abstaining from elections and not uh, making any candidate from the community. Uh, I don't have any comment on that, or I don't have any idea why do they do that, that also. Maybe that they have lost faith in the system also. Okay. So I don't know what can be other reasons. I don't have any comment on that, as I don't have access, considering the conflict scenario right now. Okay. So, uh, yeah. It's, uh, but I wish people get to vote for their own candidates without any manipulation, without any fear, without any coercion. I just wish and I just pray that they get to choose their candidates on their own without any fear. That's my wish. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Ransom. Uh, I'd like to give the last concluding remark to Mr. Pitad uh, Adani. The same question. Uh, why, why, in your opinion, do you think the cookies don't have a candidate uh, in this election? Because normally they will have it, and then um, they abs abstaining from voting. Do you think is gonna be a deciding factor? Because if they don't vote, if for example, um, if they don't participate, what, has, how is it gonna affect the four candidates in the Naga as well as the Maite area? And uh, if they have the deciding factor, if they vote, please. My personal opinion here is uh, the Kukizo community has abs like abstained themselves considering the conflict situation presently. Their problem, their issues with Maiti community, they are well aware of how the Maiti community will not vote their candidates and that it'll be a cakewalk for the Naga candidates. It's just that, just because the Kukizo is not contesting it, the Nagas are able to have so much of candidates. Otherwise, we have seen how Nagas were having only uh, uh, very few candidates in the past. And Dr. Lohr just won with massive votes from Thaubal, from Ukrul, from Naga districts, and then uh, even without the votes of the Kokizo. Now, if the since the Kokizos are not voting it, if we go by the decision of the CSOs, then the deciding factor will definitely go to the mighty votes that we see in the eight constituency where it is 251,218. Because from the cookies, the three lakhs twenty-one thousand votes will definitely not go nil. But even if they vote one lakh, or even if they vote fifty thousand, considering uh, certain interest from certain com uh, the interest uh, given by certain Naga, can Naga candidates or political party candidates. Even if they vote, the deciding vote bank will be definitely in that uh, uh, eight constituency okay. in uh, in fall. Okay. So, um, Mr. Renson uh, earlier said uh, he he mentioned about BJP uh, the supporters of BJP and Congress uh, getting the maximum votes. So these two parties, these two parties, has an edge according to his uh, uh, view. Uh, do, will you will you agree with that? Since you mentioned about uh, the eight constituencies being the deciding factor, and uh, related to what Ransom said earlier, uh, BJP back candidate, NDA candidate, uh, Mr. Timothy, and uh, the Congress candidate are getting the maximum votes in the eight assembly constituencies. So, do you think uh, they they would be, uh, you know, getting the? I mean, will be in the counting? Definitely, definitely. Because these are strong stronghold constituencies of uh, the Congress. Right. Okay. Considering the of, uh, presence of the former CM, who himself is an MLA, mm -hmm. his son is there. Right. And one of the uh, powerful congressmen, uh, the MPCC pres uh, president, 
and then uh, former works minister Ranjit. Right. I so mean, those, those they will not. The they will not. Maximum votes in the deciding factor area has the advantage then, according to our discussion. Exactly. All right. Okay, um, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure uh, talking to you, having this meaningful interaction, exchanging our opinions and uh, sharing our ideas. Thank you so much for your uh, wonderful time. It's been an enri enriching uh, interaction, mm. and I'm sure that all the viewers would love your opinions, which has been shared here. And, and um, just a uh, clarification to our viewers here, it's, it's just our personal opinions which have been uh, expressed here. We don't represent any parties or any candidates. It's just that we so, so love our society that we want to uh, uh, shed some lights to the uh, you know, current situation at the moment, and then I'm sure everyone votes, and then uh, may the best candidates be elected. And uh, once again, thank you all so much uh, the, to the, especially to the three panelists of the day of this episode. Thank you all so much. I would love to invite you in our next episode and join us again. We'll let us discuss in depth uh, of the not not just on the election, but then any of the social issues which I've, we've been facing. Uh, thank you so much uh, once again. See you all in the next yeah. episode. Yeah, thank you so much. And also, the lastly, I uh, just one one request. Yeah. Like, uh, there are two brothers like from Naga community also. So I just would like to ask viewers and uh, leaders of the Naga community and other communities who are not part of these wedding communities apart from Kukin Maitai, just to I in the starting initial phase of the conflict, I kind of them uh, saw them stepping in, uh, wanting to take the responsibility of mediate mediating part. So I would really love to see them to help in the reconciliation part and mediation part. That's just my wish. Anyway, thank you for giving me time. Thank you all so much. It's it's very late, but still, then, uh, um, it's worth it, I think. And I'm sure everyone would love our interaction. See you all again, uh, once again, in the next video. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.